Well, hello there, and welcome to the Ships and Pucks News Pack for Tuesday, June 14th. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Ships and Pucks, Facebook.com Ships and Pucks, YouTube.com Ships and Pucks, uh, Twitch.com Ships and Pucks. Subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as on the Area 51 Sports Network, as we did our podcast last night previewing the Stanley Cup final. Of course, it starts tomorrow between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, who do we think will win? We talked about we defined a rebuild, got into the Jesse Pooley RV trade target conversation as well. So check that out. That will be there as well. Uh, but this is for the news today. And uh, we, we start with a heavy hearted bit of news as a uh, legend in the Calgary Flames community, uh, former athletic player, tra- therapist. Uh, former author Bearcat Murray, Jim Bearcat Murray, passes away at the age of 89. Uh, he, of course, uh, the Calgary Flames wrote in a statement, of course, Barrett Murray, a lifelong Albertan Murray, was born in Vulcan in 1933, moved to Okotoks in 1933, where he and his family quickly established himself as devoted community members. Uh, so, uh, of course, in Okotoks, there's the Murray Arena, uh, he joined the hockey organization in 1980 as the head athletic trainer. Uh, he was uh, self-taught. He was with the Flames until 1996 when he retired. He was a pro- trainer with the Calgary Centennials and the Calgary Wranglers of the Western Hockey League. He would then go on to work in the WHA with the Calgary Cowboys and worked as an assistant trainer with the Calgary Stampeders. So he's a true lifelong Calgary and a true lifelong Albertan. Of course, he was in the uh, inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame as a trainer in 2009. Uh, he served as a community ambassador. He penned a memoir in the fall of 2021 called Bearcat Murray from Old Pot Liquor to Calgary Flames Legend. And so uh, heavy start, heavy sad news, Bearcat Murray uh, remembered, of course, just for being that, that personality uh, would be when the Flames would win. He was just as excited as everybody else. You would see him on the bench. He was he would rush on the ice when a player was injured. Uh, just a, a a true icon, a true legend, and a heavy loss for the Calgary Flames community. The loss of Bear Cat Murray there. Uh, so uh, and uh, of course the Stanley Cup Final that begins to uh, that begins tomorrow. And Braden Point practice today, by the way, it was media day. Uh, so uh, Kel heard from uh, media, so there's going to be some quotes. Uh, Braden Point practice today, he's still uh, unknown for game one. No word on Nazem Kadri yet. Uh, so we will have to see what goes on there as that goes on. Uh, in terms of lineup, you, of course, you all know that both teams will keep it tight-lipped as possible until game time. Uh, but uh, it's going to be exciting there as well. Uh, Miko Koskinen in the news as well, as he has decided uh, to uh, sign a two-year contract to play in at Switzerland. Uh, of course, uh, Koskinen uh, would have been in the UFA on July 13th. He signed a contract with H.C. Lugano. He's th- 33 years years old, 27, 12, and 4, with a 310 goals against average and an IO 37, same percentage of 45 games. Uh, 0 2 with a 4.02 goals against average in three Stanley Cup playoff games. Uh, S- Mike Smith, of course, carried the load. That's the question at Edmonton. What's going to happen with Mike Smith? Is he going to be back? The others have given both him and, of course, Duncan Keith until about July 1st to make a decision uh, in terms of what's going on. But, uh, you know, there was a goaltending question in Edmonton before Mikko Koskinen was there. Now there's a more of a certainty to that. So, you know, names will be out there. And I think that's obviously the big priority in Edmonton is, is finding a goaltender that they believe can carry the load and take them to the next step there uh as well uh and of course the rangers the other news a couple of other nhl hockey notes here uh the uh uh far as far as the new york rangers go of course they've been uh 
their steps are, are interesting and what's going on next. And of course, uh, one of the questions is, is Ryan Strom. He's a UFA as of July 13th. He's at the end of a two-year, $9 million contract. Uh, and he got injured, but I, he wants to, he's expressed an interest in re-signing with the Rangers. Uh, he's put everything into this team, he said. He thinks the guys have nothing more to love, keep it going. He just feels a bit of unfinished business. That team certainly is on the right track and on the direction towards a Stanley Cup championship. He will turn 29 on July 11th. Uh, of course, acquired from the Edmonton Oilers for uh, Ryan Spooner, 195 points in 263 games with the New York Rangers. There. And congratulations to Al Morganti and Bill Clement as they have been into the. Uh, honored by the hockey they will be honored by the hockey hall of fame as uh they uh, morganti will receive the elmore ferguson memorial road for, award for excellence in hockey journalism and bill clement will receive the foster hewitt memorial award for outstanding contributions as a hockey broadcaster uh morganti began his journalism career at the boston globe uh he was uh, covered the uh Atlanta Flames with the Atlanta Constitution, the Philadelphia Inquirer covering the Flyers, and as host of the WIP Sports Radio Morning Show in Philadelphia, and provides pre and post game analysis for an NBC Sports in Philadelphia, uh, and uh, certainly a long history. You think of Lindros, Bray, Neely, there for sure. And Bill Clement played 11 years in the NHL, two Stanley Cup champions, uh, Chips successfully transitioned into the world of uh, broadcasting, uh, four Olympics, 20 Stanley Cup finals has been heard, ESPN, of course, with Gary Thorne, NBC, ABC, TNT, CTV, CBC, and Sportsnet. Uh, so uh, congratulations to, to those two heading, uh, being honored by the Hockey Hall of Fame. And congratulations to the Edmonton Oil Kings. They are your Ed Chinoth champions for the 2021-22 year as they were able to beat the Seattle Thunderbirds last night in a in, in a six-game series. They won two to nothing. They uh, uh, outshot the Thunderbirds 36 to 27. Jakob Demick scored in the first and playoff MVP Caden Gooley scored in 344 in the second. Uh, Thunderbirds were 0 for 6 in the power play and just, you know, you got to give the Thunderbirds a lot of credit for coming back from a 3-1 deficit against the Portland Winterhawks. They came back from a 3-1 deficit to the Kamloops Blazers, uh, down 3-1 to the Oil Kings and just a heartbreaker of a game in game four where uh, Logan Dohany scored four seconds ago. Thunderbirds tried to hang in there, but just ran out of gas. Thomas Millich, I think, was a great story for the Thunderbirds. You've got a couple of great draft picks coming to watch out for. You'll see Kevin Kershinsky, Reed Schaefer, a bunch of other guys there. The Thunderbirds are in good shape, but this was a darn, this is a darn loaded, going to be very tough Memorial Cup uh, contending to Edmonton Oil King team. I mean, you got Caden Goodley and Logan Prokop. You got Jakob Demick. You, Dylan Gunther couldn't play, but you got him. You got the captain, Jake Neighbors, Souch. Uh, you acquired Justin sort of at the trade deadline, uh, just a loaded team. And it's just, a, and it was tough. And then you got Sebastian Costa playing well in goal. So the Edmonton oil Kings full value for being the champions. And so, and are heading to prepare for the Memorial cup. Uh, we do know that the Schwinning Critic hats will be there. They're the QMJHL champion. St. John's of course is the host who the OHL team will be as the, other question here as the we will have a game seven for that as the Windsor Spitfires and the uh, Hamilton Bulldogs have one more game to play. The Spitfire, the uh, as, as they will have a game seven, the Spitfire, the Fires, sorry about that, the Spitfires won five to two. And uh, there, so they will force they force a game seven uh, with the uh, against the Hamilton Bulldogs on Wednesday, and then congratulations to 
Team Canada's U18 Women's World Cup. They were uh, lost uh, to the U.S. in the uh, opening game. They are seven to nothing. But Jade Ginla and crew beat the U.S. last night, uh, three to two, to capture gold. Uh, Ginla set up Ava Murphy's goal midway through the second period. That gave Canada the two nothing lead, and uh, they were able to build and hang on from there. Uh, so, of course, Jada Ginla, eldest of Jerome Ginla's, uh, here as well. So, uh, so congratulations to that, them as well. And I'm sure we're going to hear, be hearing a lot from Jada Ginla. That career is going to prosper for sure. Tija Ginla as well will be with the Thunderbirds, drafted by the Thunderbirds. Uh, will he'll be a factor as well, but, uh, great and one of the best rivalries in hockey is the women's rivalry canada u.s u18 olympics world championships they certainly will uh continue to rival those there so that is the news for today of course again you can follow us on twitter at shifts and pucks facebook.com shifts and pucks youtube.com shifts and pucks twitch.com shifts and pucks subscribe wherever you get your audio as well as on the area 51 sports network thanks everyone for watching and listening and we'll talk to you all very soon bye for now